content structure at all times when we are posting on social media. And remember at the moment, we're only talking about Facebook, but in social media in general, our posting structure should be I double E P. So I standing for interest, something of interest. E standing for educational, something that educates your customer. And E standing for entertaining, something that entertains your customer. Now I'm stressing your customer because what I post for my customers should be and would be completely different than what you post. And each of you should be considering your ideal customer every time you are looking at a post that you are sending out. At some level, you should be thinking about the post is written for your ideal customer. So you guys who just go and pick somebody else's post and copy it and think, oh, I've got to put some content out. Don't do that. If, you, if you're looking at somebody else's post, you've got to think, is that of interest to my ideal customer? Not, oh, that's a clever post. I'll just, uh, I'll just copy that and use it because I think it's great and it's clever. Look at it and think to yourself, is that something that resonates with or is uh, of interest to or will entertain my ideal customer? When you're writing the post, consider, you know, if you know that your ideal customer is John, he's a 47-year-old I don't know, bank manager who drives a Volvo and has two teenage kids, then write your post to resonate with John. And if you're taking a post from somewhere else and you're using content from somewhere else, then make sure that you adapt it in such a way or you know that at least it is something that John would be interested in. Because just putting a post up for the sake of putting a post up without actually including or thinking about and considering your ideal customer is a complete and absolute waste of time because all that will happen is the, the people who are who are getting the posts from your page will not engage with it. And if they don't engage with it, then what happens is the algorithm in Facebook starts to shrink down the size of your audience. Remember, Facebook is deciding who sees the posts on your page. You're not making that decision. Facebook is making that decision. So if Facebook sees that people are engaged in, as in they're reading, because Facebook can tell if somebody opens up a post and reads it. So if they believe somebody's reading a post, if they believe somebody, if they can see that somebody is commenting on a post, if they can see that somebody is sharing or liking a post, that algorithm is going to go, oh, okay. So this guy's creating some decent content here that people are engaging with. Let me find some more people like the people, like these people, who are already engaging, which hopefully is your ideal customer because that's how you set up your page. And Facebook will then help you to find more people and show your posts out into the community to more people like the people who are engaging with your content. Hopefully you're with me so far, guys. So the um, the content is hugely important because on the, you know, the, the, the reverse side of that is, if people are looking at posts on your site and they think this is a pile of crap, I'm not interested in this, and they flick past it and they don't read it and they they don't like it and they don't share it, well, what's happening then is Facebook is shrinking the audience that it's showing it to. And then every time you post, Facebook is thinking, well, there's not so many people watching that, so I'm not going to actually put it in front of people. And that could be even people who have already liked your page, because what Facebook is doing is it's saying, well, they have liked the page, but they haven't engaged with any of these posts recently. So let's not show them. Let's not put that up on their timeline because Facebook wants their customers, their customers to have a good experience. So what they're going to do is they're going to put something in front of their customers that they believe their customers are going to enjoy. That's how an algorithm works. That's its job. That's what it does. So if you guys don't target content to your ideal customer, then you might as well be just banging your head against a brick wall. And that's why we do the three to one. So we'll do interest, education, entertaining, targeted at our ideal customer, and then promotion. Because if we keep doing promotion, it doesn't matter if they were a customer previously, they don't want to see your shiny new consumer unit. They don't want to know about the rewire you're doing for Mrs. Smith because it doesn't matter to them. It doesn't resonate with them. So they might watch it once or twice after they first do some work with them uh, and go, oh yeah, that was great. 
and then they're going to go fuck it's the same shit all over and over, over again i don't see his day his days work all the time i don't want to other electricians might but customers no so be careful with the content that you're actually putting out there um let's have a look i've got justin davis uh what was that i've realized since joining the toolbox just how much subbing is f- <laughs> okay well done well done justin i'm glad you realized that uh, robert waller question uh, with regards to the algorithm would your post be shown to an audience other than the people who like your page when it's not a paid advertisement yeah absolutely robert absolutely this is what facebook does the organic posts facebook will take and i've been saying this over and over and over again and this is what makes when you do this properly this is what makes your advertising a lot cheaper is because your organic post is doing the work for you let's let's just look at it in simplistic terms right if you post an advert you're paying facebook to go out and look for people to show that advert to, right? That's what you're paying Facebook to do. So the harder Facebook has to work, and I'm really simplifying this, but the harder Facebook has to work, the more it's charging you for that advert, okay? So you may end up paying, let's say, 5p for a click instead of 2p for a click or whatever the case is, because it's working hard to find people that this ad should resonate with, okay? Right, so that's a basic advert. Organic posting, right? with organic posting, when you post organically, every post that you put out will be interacted with the people who follow and like your page, okay? That's the object. So whatever way it's interacted with, it's either gonna get ignored or it's gonna get read or it's gonna get uh, shared or it's gonna get liked or it's gonna get commented on or something like that. And Facebook is gonna go, Facebook is gonna look at this, the algorithm is gonna look at this and it's gonna say, oh, right, so this type of people James DeWan, you know, a 56 year old man uh, with umpteen kids, lives in a, uh, a, a, I don't know, semi detached, what my detached house, um, and drives a Kia Sportage, blah, blah, blah. That kind of person is interacting with this and he lives in this area. Great. Let's see if there's any other people in the area who would enjoy this. And they put it out and they'll put it out onto other people's timelines. You will have had it. You will have been going scrolling through your Facebook um, timeline and you'll see random posts and it says from Facebook suggested for you. Right. I think the wording may have changed these days, but it used to be suggested for you. And the reason they're doing that is because they look at it and they go, well, people like James has actually looked at that. So let's show it to other people like James. Right. Now, what that does is if they start to interact with your posts and eventually come and like your page and follow and blah, blah, blah. They're now that organic stuff is doing the work now for Facebook of finding your audience and building your audience for you. So the more of those people who interact with your content and get involved with your content and enjoy your content, when you pay Facebook to advertise, it can now analyze a bigger database, making its life easier. And it can go, right, so we've got 500 people who are like this, that enjoy this kind of content, And he wants us to advertise it to more people like that in this area. Well, we've got enough data, we've got enough information, but let's go and do it. Right. That's more or less what we're what we're doing here. So that's, you know, and I have sort of kind of simplified it, Robert, but that is, in essence, it. Um, I hope that makes sense. We were talking about content structure and we talked about the IEEE sort of interest, educate and entertain. So where do we use them? Where, where, you know, we should be using them in Facebook right across the, the board. But as far as Facebook promotions and Facebook advertising is concerned, um, if we look at what we've, what we've been doing over the course of the last couple of weeks, um, our omnipresent campaign is targeting a very broad spectrum. If you look at how we set that up, we're not targeting specific individuals. What we're doing is we're targeting people in an area who may be a broad demographic of our ideal customer. So it would be, let's say the area and the age group. That would be about it as far as the omnipresent is concerned. Because what we're doing with the omnipresent, we're spending a pound per ad, 12 ads, 12 pound per day, just going out to the community and going, I exist, I exist, I exist. And if you're in the age group of my ideal customer, I want you to know that I am here. Because what will happen is some people will interact. We talked about this a minute ago when we talked about the algorithm. Some people will interact and go, oh, this is kind of 
half interesting. Some people will read it out of curiosity and others will just ignore it. And you start to build up, or Facebook starts to build up a picture and an algorithm uh, of who it is that is interested in what it is that you actually do. Then if we move into our digital leaflet advertising campaign, now that's gonna be slightly more targeted because what we're gonna do with our digital leaflet campaign when we set that up is we still do broad targeting, but it is purely about what we do. So the omnipresent campaign is all content. It's, it's something of interest, something of education, something entertaining and the odd um, promotional post. Whereas our digital leaflet campaign is completely, this is me, this is my business, this is what I do, right? If you're interested in that, use this to contact me. That's your digital leaflet campaign. These things all support one another, okay? So then we move on from that. And moving on from that, we have what we call focused advertising. Now, this is when we actually do a promotion, a sales promotion. So for example, I've got a job lot of consumer units and I want to get a, a book up. The one I would do is the Christmas. Coming up to Christmas, I would be booking in a whole pile of consumer units to start doing in January. So now I'm going to do some focused advertising and that focused advertising, targeted advertising, is going to be based on a an audience which is much more refined. These are the retargeting. These are the people who have already either been in touch these are the people who have read a lot of content. These are the people who are engaging and sharing my post because these are now warm. These are people that I'm going to start looking at to actually encourage them. They may not have already used me. They may not have already worked with me, but they are people who are more likely to work with me. And my audience that I'm going to target with these promotions is a much more targeted, much more focused audience. And then after the promo adverts, we have our retargeting adverts. Now our retargeting adverts are primarily, primarily targeted at people who have all, we've already done some work for, or at least they've inquired about doing some work, but it will also trickle down to people who are aware that we exist, they know we exist and may not have worked with us. But it's primarily targeting, keeping our name on the tip of the tongue of the people who've already worked with us. So using this structure, having your omnipresent working for you, having a digital leaflet campaign up and running for you, having a focused promotion campaign that you will run every now and again. The first two, you're, in my view, the first two, omnipresent and digital leaflet, should be running continuously. They should be running all of the time. Now you set your budget, not me. I can suggest what you do with that. But you know, I'm saying you're omnipresent, a pound a day on each of those. If you're running 12 of those, yeah, I mean, you can reduce that down to six or eight of those. Uh, you can go down to four of those if you want. You're going to get a lot more impact out of the 12 if you want to do a, if you want to really dominate an area. So you're omnipresent. Then you've got your digital leaflet that should just run at a pound a day and that should run all of the time. The problem that some people have is they stop them. After a while, they go, oh, I'm getting nothing off this. So they stop it. What you don't realize is that your algorithm then uh, stops learning. It stops It stops thinking, right, who do I need to show this to? As the older it goes, the cheaper your advertising gets. In other words, it's now showing it. So you might still spend a pound a day, but that pound a day is being targeted at more likely individuals. It's, it's going, it, the algorithm learns who not to show it to. There will be people who never, ever, ever engage with it. And then there's people who will view it, look at it, save it, share it, whatever. The algorithm is learning. The longer the ad is running, the more refined that ad is actually becoming. But again, something like the digital leaflet, it is literally like putting a leaflet through somebody's letterbox. You're landing on their desk on a regular basis. They're not deleting you. They're not moving away from you. The uh, algorithm is showing it to them on a regular basis, which means that when the time comes that they need an electrician, they will still have contact with that that advert so digital leaflet omnipresent should run continuously the focus promotional advertisement runs on a, 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 a as as promotion basis so if you're running uh you know christmas uh garden lights and all that kind of stuff if you're running an october november campaign for consumer units if you're running a halloween campaign for external lighting whatever it is that's when you run your promotional ones they come and they go 
and they are based on particular promotions that you're doing and then your retargeting campaign should be running again in the background on a low budget it should just be sat there ticking over and you can do that at a, a, an annual budget or you can do that on a weekly monthly or daily budget that you like so that's your content structure and that's how you should be creating and putting together your adverts as far as facebook is concerned if you do it that way you will dominate your local area